Hey, Richard Knudsen here again. And in another session, I talk about on-demand workflows. And I made the point that the issue of who can run one of these is determined by a combination of the security role of the user who wants to run it, and sometimes by the business unit of the owner of the workflow. Now this time, I want to talk about automatic workflows. And these work a little differently, mainly because it's not a question of who can choose to run one. There's no choice, since they're automatic. Rather, the issue is which users will cause them to run by performing one of the triggering events. Now, I'll use the same workflow I did in the on-demand discussion to illustrate. Suppose we have a requirement in our organization that no matter who creates a contact, it must always be assigned to the user to whom the parent account is assigned. Here's the on-demand version of this workflow. You can see that it's written for the contact entity see here that it's available on demand. The first thing the workflow does is to check to see if the contact record is attached to a parent customer. If not, it stops the workflow, drops out. But if it is, then you want to make sure and assign the contact record to the same person that owns the parent account record. Now remember the on demand version of this workflow preserves discretion in the process. It doesn't require us to assign contacts to the account owner. But if we want to, this gives us an efficient way of doing it. So how do we make this automatic? Well, one level, it seems pretty straightforward. The workflow is unpublished, so I can make changes to it. And I'll uncheck the on-demand checkbox in the available and run section. And I'll check this record is created checkbox in the options for automatic workflow section. I'll also give it a more appropriate name, such as on create, and I can save and publish it. Now you can probably guess that this workflow is going to run automatically anytime anybody in the organization creates a contact record. That's because I published it with the value of this scope property set to organization. Now scope only matters for automatic workflows and as you'll see it's what gives the workflow author the ability to determine which users in the organization will trigger the workflow when they perform one of these start point events, such as creating a contact record, as in this example. Now remember, I'm signed in now as a system administrator user, who's also assigned to the root business unit. And I'm also the owner of this workflow, so it won't really be much of a test if I create a contact record. The question is, what happens when a user in a different security role in the business unit creates one? So before testing that, I will close out his workflow, and I'll navigate to my test user record, Tony Oliva, and I'll verify that he's assigned to the West business unit, and I'll change his security role from the sales manager, Amy Matt, and assign to him a custom security role, the one you see here. Close out of his user record, and before performing my little test, I want to open up that security role and show you a couple of important things about it. First, if I click on the customization tab, notice that this role only has user level lead privilege on workflows. If you remember in the on demand workflow discussion, I described how this setting would restrict users to only having access to on demand workflows they own. But as you'll see, we'll get different results with automatic workflows. Second, back on the core records tab, notice that although this role will give the user lots of privileges on record, there's one important privilege they won't have. That's the ability to assign contact records. That's what this empty red circle indicates here. And it's important because if you remember the workflow we want to run does exactly that. It reassigns contact records to a parent account's owner. So you might think this user won't be able to successfully run a workflow that assigns contacts, but as you'll see, that's not necessarily the case when it comes to automatic workflows. Okay, for my little test, I've signed out of my system administrator account and signed in as my test user, Tony, and I'll navigate to an account record. It's owned by the system administrator. I'll take this one. Remember, it's assigned to the root business unit. Now I'll create a contact record, 
And as you know, since I'm creating it from the account record, CRM will pick that up and it will fill in the parent customer lookup field along with any mapped fields that contain data. Remember by default, if I create a record, I own it. And I can verify this by clicking on the administration tab and seeing that Tony will be the default owner of this contact. So save and close the record. And after giving the workflow a chance to run and refreshing this view, I can see that it worked because the contact record has been reassigned to Richard, the owner of the parent account. So what does this illustrate? Well, the first thing that we see from this example is that who an automatic workflow runs for is determined by workflow scope. So since this workflow is scoped at the organization level, it's going to run any time a contact record is created, regardless of where in the organization the user creating it sits. Now second, and maybe more surprisingly, we saw that this user doesn't have assigned privileges for contacts. So how could that contact record get reassigned? Well, that's because automatic workflows run in the security context of the workflow owner, not the user triggering the workflow. So since this workflow is owned by a system administrator user, the running instance of the workflow has all the privileges required to perform whatever it needs to do. Now, suppose I wanted to do something similar to what I did in the on-demand workflow discussion, namely to make this automatic workflow run only for users in a specific business unit. How do I do that? To show that, I'll first sign back in as the system administrator user. Okay, now that I'm signed back in as my system admin user, I'll do a couple of things. First, I'll assign my test user back to a more conventional security role, sales manager. So I'll remove the custom security role, assign that sales manager security role. Then I'll reassign the workflow to my new sales manager. And as you may remember from the similar discussion for on-demand workflows, when I reassign a workflow, Dynamic CRM tells me that in order to reassign it, it needs to be unpublished. It'll need to be published again by the sales manager, its new owner, before it'll be able to do anything. So what you'd see if I signed in as the sales manager and published that workflow is that going forward, it would only run for users assigned to the same business unit as the owner of the workflow. It wouldn't run for anybody else, including system administrator. Because the system administrator user in this scenario is in a different business unit. So to summarize, unlike on-demand workflows, automatic workflows use the scope property to determine who in the organization it will run automatically for. So if you create an automatic workflow and give it a scope of user, it won't run for anybody except for you. If you create one with a scope of organization, it will run for everyone in the organization. Now remember I made the point that automatic workflows run in the security context of the owner of the workflow. And it's the security context of the workflow owner that limits the potential damage an organizational workflow might do. For example, in my scenario, Tony, the sales manager, could write an automatic workflow with a scope of organization that reassigns any new account record to him. He could create, save, and publish it. But since the sales manager security role only has business unit assigned privilege for accounts, even though this workflow would run for everybody in the organization, it would only work for users in the same business unit as Tony. I leave it as an extra credit assignment for you to verify that one. Well, Richard Knudsen signing out, and I hope you found this helpful. And by the way, I've got a series of one-day training sessions I run every month called the Dynamic CRM Essentials Series. And one of my favorites is the session on workflows. So if you want to learn more, you might be interested in checking those out.